Welcome to Russ Sound. Thanks for joining us today, guys. My name is Ben. I'm with Russ Sound Tech Support, and I'm going to show you start to finish setting up an MBX Pre so you can get this up and running. This is a good video for you to review if this is your first time working with an MBX product or you've worked with several MBXs in the past and you just need a refresher. As always, to start, we want to make our wiring connections first, so we'll turn the MBX Pre around. The major connections we're going to need are power. Power cable will connect to the power input on the back. We'll need audio out from the MBX Pre going to our amplifier of choice as well. You do have the option of digital optical out or RCA out. I'm going to use RCA for this. We'll connect those wires up there. Make sure they're inserted nice and tight. The third and final required connection is Ethernet. I always prefer a hardwired connection, but it's worth noting that the MBX Pre also offers wireless capable options. So we can have this connect to your customer's network right through Wi-Fi. And we're going to cover getting the MBX connected to a network on Wi-Fi next. If you're using a hardwired connection exclusively with your MBX Pre, you can skip forward into the video. But for anyone who wants to get their MBX Pre connected to a network over Wi-Fi, I'm going to demonstrate three options allowing you to do this. Let's go right into those now. Option number one is setting up initially with a hardwired connection and then commanding the product to connect to a desired Wi-Fi network after we're able to get into the device. This one is the most straightforward and my number one preferred method. That's as easy as getting it hardwired into the network first, and then we'll need to locate the MBX Pre's IP address. If you're unsure of how to grab the MBX Pre's IP address, be sure to check out our previous video covering how to find a Russound Systems IP address. Once you have the IP address, we're going to open a web browser and log right into the product. Now we've successfully logged into the product on our web browser. We can unlock and name the device as needed, and when we're ready, we'll click Next. This will bring us to our networking page within first time setup. And from here, we can choose a wireless network, enter the password, and apply. The MBX will take a few brief moments to update the new network settings we've made. You might need to refresh the browser page you're in. And at this point, if you've entered the right password for your Wi-Fi network, you can remove the hardwired ethernet connection from the back of the MBX and you'll probably need to do a fresh IP scan as your MBX will receive a fresh IP address via Wi-Fi. Once you get that information, you can log right back in and proceed on with the rest of your setup. Your MBX will now be connected to your desired Wi-Fi network. Option number two for setting your MBX up on the desired Wi-Fi network is soft access point mode. To this end, we will not use a hardwired Ethernet connection, and the MBX will show us a blinking amber LED to indicate the device is powered on but not on an active network. The next step will be to go into our phone, our tablet, or our laptop and look for wireless networks. Going over to my computer here, if I look at my available wireless networks that I can connect to, I'll actually see that the MBX Pre with its reporting host name is available as a wireless network that I can connect to. We'll go ahead and do that now. This will just be a one-to-one -one connection from the MBX Pre to my computer I'm connecting on. The next step will be to open a web browser again. Now we can open up our web browser. Our laptop will not have connection to the outside world, but in our web browser we're going to type in a specific IP address to connect to. 192.168.255.249 as shown in the top left of the screen here. I'm going to go ahead and enter this and it will bring us into the MBX Pre first time setup. We can unlock and name the device as needed and then proceed to the next page for networking. Just like before, we can choose a Wi-Fi network of choice to add this product on, enter the desired password, and click the apply button below. The MBX will take a few moments to refresh with the new network settings. In this case, we will need to connect our laptop back to the proper wireless network that we were on or hardwired connection and we'll need to likely perform an IP scan. The MBX will now get a fresh IP address on our desired network. Once we have this, we can open a browser, navigate to that new IP address, and we are off and ready to continue with the rest of first time setup, all via through Wi-Fi. 
The third and final way that you can set the MBX Pre up on a Wi-Fi network is also not going to be utilizing the hardwired Ethernet connection. So your MBX Pre will be flashing amber on the front to once again indicate it's powered on but it has no network communication. This time we're actually going to set the product up through the Google Home app. The Google Home app is a free app available. This is usually t installed on Android devices by default, but Apple users can also access this for free through the Apple App Store. So you're going to go ahead and launch the app called Google Home. Once we've launched Google Home, we'll want to choose the option to set up a new device. You might be instructed to create a home first. Google Home will then proceed to look for devices locally. And it looks like it has found a Rossound MBX. It then asks us, would we like to set this device up? At this point, we'll of course hit yes. The MBX will then be contacted through Google. What's nice about this process is this will actually add the MBX to the Wi-Fi network of choice. And in many cases, we won't even have to type in the wireless password. Whatever your tablet is connected to or your phone, as far as Wi-Fi goes, will be the network that the MBX is added to. So, of course, make sure that your phone or tablet that you're utilizing Google Home on for this process is indeed connected to the desired Wi-Fi network that you wish the MBX to be on at the end of the day. You will be asked if you hear a noise. If your MBX isn't wired into a amplifier yet or speakers, then you won't hear anything. But that's a good sign that it asks you that anyways. It'll then ask you what room it's located in. You can either give it a custom name or one of the pre-chosen names for you. This can all be changed once you actually log into the product itself, though, so no big deal here. We're just going to call it G, and we're going to add it to the Sugar Mama Wi-Fi network that this tablet is connected to. Friendly reminder, make sure you plug in your electronics at night. My tablet's at 2%. You'll notice I didn't have to type in the wireless password for this network either. This was already stored on my tablet, and Google handed that information off to my MBX. From here on out, Google will ask you a few additional questions. It's up to you to either set some of these features up or not. At the end of the day, this is just strictly to get your MBX connected to the desired Wi-Fi network. It does have one extra side effect though. Your MBX is now ready to be used with Google Chromecasting features as well. So you can cast a number of third-party apps that support Chromecast right over your Wi-Fi network into the streamer. This might be an option you want to perform anyways after the fact, even if you've used any of our other methods to set your MBX up on or elected to go strictly hardwired, but this just ends up killing two birds with one stone. Now we can look up the product's IP address and log right into it via our web browser. Just as earlier, we would need to unlock this product and assign it a name. As you can see, the name G Speaker was assigned to it because I named the product G within Google Home. This is completely up to you to change it to whatever you want, of course. This is just a demonstration. We'll go ahead and click Next here. One thing that does look different here is your network and page is no longer available for you to make modifications to. This is because you allowed Google Home to do all that setup for you. If you do desire to have some freedom in making modifications to your networking choices down the line, you might elect to not use the Google Home during the initial setup. This is because if you do use Google Home, as you can see here with this message in front of us, we can't make networking changes through the Rustown web configuration page. You would need to make those changes via Google Home, and you might at some point be forced to factor reset the MBX if you want to have full control over networking capabilities as, as far as editing the desired Wi-Fi network you want the product on, or perhaps setting up a static IP address. So just keep that in mind. This option is super handy and super easy to do but it might have a side effect of making your life a little bit more difficult if you need to make some modifications to your networking setup on the MBX down the road. So just keep that in mind. All right, so whether you've set your MBX pre up exclusively on a hardwired ethernet connection, or you've gone through one of the three methods I outlined for setting the MBX pre on a Wi-Fi network, 
Ultimately, you're going to end up within the first time setup menu when you first log into your MBX. From here, we can name the device according to how we want it to appear, and we can click Next. On this page, we have networking, so if you want to make some modifications to any of the networking functions of your MBX, you can do so here, such as assigning a static IP address. Then we click Next. From here, we can adjust date and region time settings. This will be automatically updated with internet time, so all you have to choose is your region where you are just to dictate what time zone your MBX is reporting in. Then we click Next. Firmware update will be the last option presented to you here. If your product is not fully up to date, the option for web update will be highlighted blue and you can then choose to do a web update. If you perform a web update, the MBX will take several minutes just to download and acquire the update and then it will reboot after a few moments of doing the update. After the reboot process is complete, you will need to log back into the product's IP address and re-enter first time setup. You'll likely find that you'll have to skip through all those pages at the top for next until you get back to this page whether you've needed to update firmware and you find yourself back here after, or if your firmware is already up to date, or for some reason you want to save firmware update until later, when you're ready, you're going to click Done. Of course, the device will need to be unlocked, so you're going to click the Unlock option here and insert your Rusound certified installer credentials. If you're not prepared with this information or you've forgotten your password, reach out to Rusound Technical Support or our sales team and we can help you get that information squared away. After our device has been unlocked from here on out, it's pretty much free reign as far as customization. If you want to modify anything administration related, that'll be found under the admin tab, such as modifying your networking settings, doing firmware updates, reviewing information about Chromecast, modifying what streaming services are visible for your customer to take advantage of. Keep in mind you can hide and modify what is visible here, so you might want to do a little bit of housekeeping depending on what services they may or may not be using, as well as third-party integration options and factor reset. Likely the only major thing you'll be doing is under the Setup tab though. And from here in the case of an MBX Pre, the main choice you'll end up making here is what mode you're going to be using the MBX in. Zone mode is selected by default when you first power on and unbox this MBX. This allows the MBX Pre to act as its own independent zone of audio. You use this mode when you are using the MBX Pre with a third-party amplifier or a Rusound amplifier that is not a Rusound MCA series control amplifier like an MCA 66, MCA 88, or MCA 88X. In the case of source mode, this would be used if you are specifically using the MBX Pre as a source of music to an MCA series multi-zone controller amplifier, such as an MCA 66, MCA 88, and MCA 88X. When selecting the source mode, you'll be presented with a drop-down menu, and all we have to do is tell the MBX which source we are assigning this MBX to. Source 138 corresponding to sources 1 through 8, or 1 through 6 if you will, for an M MCA 66 or MCA 88. Just make sure on the MCA series system you're using, you also do the proper programming to allow the MCA to work with this new audio source. Outside of that, that is all you need to do, and from here on out, you can then test the system out, fire up the Rusound app or your keypad, or in the instance of an MCA series system, go ahead and fire up your keypad or app control for that product, Test it out, make sure everything's working. If anything else comes up, check out some of our other videos that may cover those topics, or be sure to reach out to Raw Sound at any point if you need assistance. If you like this video, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. And as always, comments are certainly welcome, especially suggestions for future videos you'd like to see. Thank you guys, stay safe.